Hey, what's up? I'm Al Cox. I play games, make games, and everything in between. And today we are talking about the top five trends in hyper casual games. You like mobile games? I like mobile games. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm all about mobile games. Before I get started, there's a new Instagram account I like. It's called Hyper Casual Game Dev. Great for ideas. It's just really cool to see a bunch of different games back to back in short clips. Also check me out on Instagram, Al Cox, and you can see what I'm up to on my day to day. The first thing we are talking about today is snack ability. This is a term coined by Voodoo. Play a little bit of the game on the way to work, go to work, and then during lunch break, continue from where you left off. Being able to play the game for about 15 to 45 seconds, is the game good for a short subway ride and a long subway ride? If so, then it's got snack ability. Modern hyper casual games, you'll complete the level within 15 to 45 seconds, giving you that satisfaction of overcoming the obstacles and then moving on to a slightly more difficult challenge. This allows for short gameplay within each level stacked on top of a longer gameplay so when you get to level 20 you've seen a progression how things start from easy to slightly more difficult a good contrast is games a couple years ago you just started from the bottom and when you got to your high score and died then you had to start over again the way the market has grown and developed people kind of just got tired of dying and starting from the beginning. This ability of having multiple stages in the game gives the player the consistent feeling that they are progressing, getting better without having to start from the beginning. It's interesting to see how the game market has developed and grown over time within just a few years. The second thing you see in all hyper casual game is a single one finger or one thumb mechanic, whether you're swiping or you're tapping, you're not using two fingers. This has definitely grown over the years. It has become very intuitive in terms of how people play and what is all achieved within the game itself. One thumb to rule them all. Some examples you've seen are the stop and go. You'll have a character in a course like Fun Race 3D or Line Color where the character is just moving along a predetermined course and you tap with one finger to have the character move and then you let go to have the character stop to keep them from dying from the enemies or the obstacles that are in front of them. We've seen in Aquapark.io, Line Picker 3D, Battle Disc, Collect Cubes. These are all games in the top 10 right now and they require you to move your thumb left and right, causing the character to move left or right. These are all single tap gameplay mechanics. Some of them like touch the wall by Voodoo, even reverse the tap so where you let go and the character starts moving and you tap to have the character moving. And the reason for this is minimalism and simplicity. The less you have to do where you press the button, how you press the button, allows the player to focus on the gameplay the gameplay mechanics are simple, the game itself is simple, but everything that happens is not so simple. Third thing you see in all hyper casual games is satisfaction. Whether it's confetti exploding everywhere, something's blowing up, being destroyed, the character becomes invincible, power ups, all these things give an extra level of satisfaction while playing the game. Things do not get boring, you don't know what to expect. Satisfaction adds excitement to the mundane. If you just have a character that's moving down a water slide and there's nothing going on, that's not satisfying. But if you can bump somebody off the water slide and that person falls off the edge, well, that is super satisfying. If a character goes through an object and that object explodes into a million pieces, super satisfying. The character becomes super powered and is able to destroy everything it touches, satisfying. Players want to be satisfied during the process of trying to complete each level and continuously give that to the player they will keep playing the game from one level to the next to the next the fourth thing you see in all hyper casual games is dope 
color contrast. Your brain is literally hardwired to notice color contrast. This causes colors to pop where before they could have just looked boring. They grab your attention and keep your focus in the game. Watching out for enemies, watching out for obstacles, other players. Color contrast keeps people both consciously and subconsciously paying attention to everything that is going on on the screen. Are there more objects coming up from the top? Objects are coming from the side. Do those objects have the contrast color of your main character? Because if they do, you will notice them and you will get out of the way, dodge those bullets, shoot the enemy, and complete the level. So color contrast is really important and you'll see it in all the games. Blue and red, green and purple, orange and blue, light blue and light green, red and blue, green and red. So with the right color contrast, players don't mind looking at the screen for a long amount of time. And if they're playing your game for a long amount of time, that means that they'll probably come back and play it the next day, seven days later, keeping you with a high daily retention rate, something all publishers are looking for. The last and most difficult to determine is innovation. People want to see what they've never seen before, play a game in a way that they've never done. The mobile game industry is full of clones and everyone can copy an idea, but taking two different ideas, putting them together in a way that's never been seen before, that's innovative. That can capture someone's attention and keep them playing and is good for the CPI. CPI a, which is cost per acquisition. If you have someone who has never seen the game style before, they have a higher probability of downloading your game and playing it. This is the most difficult to achieve and the most valuable. Honestly, you don't get to decide if it succeeds or not. It's up to the market. This is why Voodoo, Say Games, Quali, and all the big publishers, when they see one of the other big publishers come out with a new game, all of them copy and clone in some type of fashion because that game is somewhat innovative. If you can copy an innovative game quickly as possible, then there's more money in the bank for these publishers. The best way to do innovation is trial and error, to just keep going, see what works, see what doesn't work, and then put the game to market and see what people think. This is the best way to find out and test your ideas. Lastly, I just wanna give one shout out to haptic feedback. Some people don't like it when the phone vibrates, some people do like it but I've been seeing it in more and more games. At first I didn't like it but now I'm all about it. Let me know what you think about my top five trends in hyper casual games. What have you seen? What's your favorite hyper casual game? Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.